I have an idea. Let's paint the model just to learn a lesson. Hello everybody. Still feeling fresh from the Nova Open. It's been weeks now or maybe months depending on at what point in time you're watching this. But I'm back and a lot of the advice I was giving to people when I was providing feedback after the competition, I encouraged a lot of people to paint a black and white model. I also spoke a lot about portion control and imagining your gradients um, similar to a topographical map. So for today's experiment, we'll be working on the Warrior from Miniac Models. A big thank you to Scott for sending me all three of these models. I wanted to do something special on this for my special guy, and Scott specializes in education, so why not make something also educational, but that is, after all, my attempt in every single video. However, the motivation can vary. So first of all, I had a little uh, observation time with my model. I set it down, turned off all the lights, and just lit it under a single lamp. I turned the darkness way down low on my camera, and tried to just really cue in to what the light was telling me. Looking at a darker copy of the model like this, you can see I think a lot of more of the, the subtleties become more visible and uh, yeah, this is exactly what I'll be trying to mimic as I paint my model. But of course I'm going to forego all that blending nonsense and just lay things out in perfectly controlled portions. I want to try to almost like creating a cell shaded look. It's gonna have a very cartoony look but I think that this uh, is a lesson well served. It can help you identify where to control the depth of shadow to really present the model. And as well as controlling the, the mid-tones. Not everything has to go down to absolute black and not everything has to be highlighted up to an absolute white. My journey was underway with a series of gray mixtures from the Army Painter. I mix it up four gradually increasing tones into a warm gray. This first pass is going to be broad. I think my instincts, maybe yours are the same, is to immediately start leaving black shadows. You only have two colors in play, so it's really easy to balance the two out um, in just perfect half and half. But really starting to clue in where I saw the greatest depth of shadow. I would save my absolute black for just those specific areas. And making sure that each blob was fully saturated. Moving right along, a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter. I had my portion set, so now I am aware that everything I'm doing takes place inside of only those areas. As I'm working away, I'm glancing back and forth between the model and the screen. I have it pulled up full screen, the image is enlarged, so really it was about copying the photograph. And no, I did not bother to paint the back of this model. And again, gradually getting brighter. This is very pleasing to look at. I had that, that firm drop shadow coming underneath the knife. I was uh, very happy with this. But here I am staring at, at this black and white copy of the model, really hunting for subtleties. The more you, you peer into something, this is very valuable. I, I kept finding more, having to kind of rearrange and change my portions. Just standard practice for the back and forth nature of painting. but. It really makes you think about the larger shapes at play, the drop shadows, and just the connection of shadows to form their own individual shapes. Yeah, this is really useful. And now for that final touch, I'm finding myself having to fight my own instincts. I have natural ideas about where the light would fall, but not in this extreme situation. He's under a single light source and I don't know, sometimes what I'm trying to achieve would be a little bit brighter version of this, but anyways, I, I feel like I have the natural zenithal scope, like many of us have trained ourselves to do, but this is a little bit different, so just trying to maintain your focus and ignore your instincts slightly. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a little tightrope that I was walking along here, and also avoiding intentionally blending. It's hard not to just place a spot of paint down and start sweeping. I had to, I wanted to maintain some very sharp borders. On that note, feel free to go back and add black, recarving the shadows. You know, some of them are curving slightly. The knife shadow 
on the chest, for example, has a bend in it as it follows his glistening pectorals. The, the crevice between those glistening pectorals. What a sight. But there it was. I had a nice black and white copy of the model casually walking as it licks its blade. And yeah, at this point in the process, just like when I painted Karazai the Scarred? Yes, in a sketch style. I wish I could put this into some kind of machine and make multiple copies of it. There's so many ways you can now modify this. The airbrush is is going to be a very fun tool, but yeah, I've, I could spray skin tones in, I could try laying sepia tones in place, I could spray a unifying deep shadow to smooth out these progressions. It was, uh, yeah, it was very fun to lay things out in that kind of fuck smoothness style. But in the end, what I decided to do with my airbrush was get some Majestic Fortress from Army Painter and spray some ambient light up from the model's left. It seemed fitting. This is a spooky model, and it's, it's easy to imagine it in black and white with just a splash of color being almost natural. And uh, yeah, I like the, the drama here, the starkness. It kind of gives it sort of a Sin City vibe. Um, and then... To amplify the depth, I brought some pure red into play on the model's right-hand side, keeping this concentrated on the, on the forward areas. You can see how the now just through a little bit of tonal control, that rear boot drops back because it's a colder color. Yeah, the red just it adds a lot of emotion to it. It was, it was so simple, yet so effective. And that's the fun of a project like this. So I hope that it encourages you to try this on your own. Please do. We spend a lot of time painting and trying to just get everything right the first time, just trying to do that perfect flip, but practicing some of the fundamentals that lean into that activity is beneficial. So take a night to yourself, try painting a model in black and white, just paint the front of it. You have plenty of unpainted models. I'm just guessing. I am also positive. As always, and I mean it every time, thank you for your support. Thank you for support on Patreon. I can't do it without you. Thank you to Scott for providing this model. And hit that like or subscribe button. Just one of them if you're watching this on YouTube. So until we meet again, there's a truck sound to finish the video off. I sit here and sometimes speak in between dogs barking and trucks speeding. And that's my time. Smooth ending.